Recording in progress. Commissioners of Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, to order. Please join for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't see any media questions. Not on the Zoom. No. no. Okay. Do we have any public input? Yes, Fred came from Wolfboro. Uh, this morning, as I looked at the Conway Sun, I noticed that the Conway Board has agreed to uh, have the prisoners redo the benches and put on some cushions there for eighty-eight dollars a piece. And I don't know if maybe we can you know, uh, have them do these benches to make it a little bit more comfortable for us, even though I'm not sure you want to make it comfortable for <laughs> us. But uh, uh, I had been overlooking some of the texts that uh, the county attorney has sent Kevin, and uh, I, I'd like to know, going back to 2020, where there appears to be pay that has not been paid for. Uh, I know Chairman or <coughs> Chair McCarthy was on the board at that time. Did you know that hay had not been paid for the county? No. So the... We found out at the same time you did. So the director has never brought this to the attention of the commissioners? So it's been going on for years. I, I can't speak for the other commissioners that were here, but right. I did not. You know, I, I would have thought that maybe an auditor would have picked up on that if there were outstanding, you know, uh, funds that had not been received for the hay. And I hope we're putting in a process for that. But also in the text messages, a lot, of, and has any of the commissioners read these text messages? I, I, I think you ought to uh, sit down and go through them. It's very, very telling on some of them. Uh, there's, there's one here that was, uh, Kevin had sent the message to, to Will asking about hay, and he didn't answer him, and Will stated, Kevin Hool just texted me. He's coming by today to pick up hay. I didn't answer him. I don't plan to. If you see him coming, I wouldn't even answer the door. LOL. That's kind of shocking, to say the least. And, uh, you know, so obviously he had a target on his back that they weren't going to sell him. Hey, and I would ask you commissioners to read them. There's quite a few texts in here. I've requested a digital copy of them that I'd like to have because there's also many other things here uh, that I think needs attention. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, can I just clarify one thing? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kane just said he requested the electronic versions of the text. Yes. You've already done that? Or yes, you're going I've, to... I've sent it to you. Uh... Okay, I'll, I'll look back through my email. Yeah, was I, I, do, I do have my March 8th request that I have requested information basically on the same stuff that was given to Kevin that I have not received and right to know. But I would also like to let comment of the text messages. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go back through my emails. I missed 
I don't recall that. Yeah, you, you haven't accepted it from me yet, but. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bull? Yeah, uh, Kevin Wool. I live up the street. Been a uh, taxpayer here in this county for 28 years now. And um, yeah, I have just so the, the people behind the camera there that watch this, I, I requested uh, all of uh, Mr. DeWitt's uh, text messages from uh, when, well, when, we, when he stopped selling me hay, which was uh, the, the check that I wrote that he held for five months before he brought it to the bank. But anyways, I, I've only got three minutes here, so I'll tell you. Here's a text that I sent to uh, Mr. DeWitt, May 15th at uh, 143, 21 seconds. Hey, Will, any hay for sale? Are those white wrap bales available? Referencing the parking lot, you know. Nothing right now, really. I might have a couple of low quality wrap bales available in a week or two. I have a, to double check that a customer I promised them to doesn't want them now. His cows go out to grass soon, I think. And I wrote back, I would buy one of them low quality wrap bales today for cash and pick it up instantly. I'm almost out. He says, not sure what your policy is. Oh, I said, there's not, uh, what, when I sell something, it's first come, first serve, cash on the barrel head. How does this buyer get special saved promises? I've lived in this county for 27 years, pay taxes for as many. No one has ever saved or promised me anything except a tax bill twice a year. I've been having to buy hay out of Canada because of your privileged promises to other people. How do I get to be a special customer that you promise hay to? My money spends the same way. <clears throat> I think it's about time I have a meeting with the county commissioners and ask what the hay sales policy is and why some get special treatment and others don't. I have grievances. Why there isn't enough hay to go around and now with talk of the White Horse facilities being building on the hay fields. And Will writes back, I see you have a few concerns and I'll try to address them all and clarify any misunderstandings you may have about hoarding hay. Hay is bought on a first come, first serve basis. We have a hay shortage every year. We wouldn't if they hayed earlier, but I digress. As we are unable to make enough to fill customer demands. The customer bought and paid these bales last year, but was unable to store them all after the hay was paid for. I allowed them to stay on the county property. As you seem to be in need of hay, my thought was to ask the customer, open parenthesis, who had already paid for the hay bales, close parenthesis, if they needed it now or if I could refund them and sell it to you. As I personally have animals, I understand the urgency of feeding livestock and try to assist with your predicament. Any privileged treatment, in quotation marks, for customers was for my benefit, your benefit, as normally I, ha I have don't have any hay, it's a little typo, I have don't have any hay available at this time of year. As for the issues of hay fields being sold and being developed, I'm not a deciding official on that, this proposal. I invite you to address uh, any concerns you may have with the commissioners. And you know, when I asked Will, you know, if he had just sold me those five bills, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. You know, this isn't, this isn't fun and games for me. I have other things, I have a life to live. This isn't my entertainment. If you just sold me those five bales, I would be happy. I, I wouldn't be, you know, this conflag wouldn't be going on. But when I told Will, I said, you know, Will, he said, no, there's no hay available. And I said, that's unacceptable. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. From there, I'm going across the parking lot, didn't I, Mr. DeWitt? And I'm going to talk to the commissioners. And he said, go right ahead. So here I am. Thank you for your time. And that's the truth. The whole truth, so help me God, because I don't lie. I tell the truth. So, I just want to go back to last week when I was talking about the policy for cash. In the, uh, so I was watching the tape. I might have been a little bit abrupt with uh, the director and the CFO, and I, I want to apologize for that because I know it's not their fault. They're new, just as these two commissioners here are new. You were probably here when the policy was put into place. I'm not sure. What policy? The, the no cash in the dining hall. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. That was that's just been recent, very oh. recent. Yeah, I don't know how it happened, 
Oh, but I want to apologize to them because I wasn't I wasn't trying to be rude. Sometimes I come, I come off a little cross. Um, you were fine. And I would I would hope that you would really look at that policy. Um, money is still our only way of paying for things, and I don't see anywhere on a debit card that says this is legal tender. <laughs> so. Um, okay. And that's all I want to say. All right. Thank you. Okay, we will go into recess uh, to go into Hale's location. 12.09. I think the only thing we have is the minutes, correct? Yes. For Hale's? Yeah. Okay. Motion to accept. Did everybody look at them? Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing, <laughs> no, there's there's nothing on there. Yeah. It should be in number number three. Mm -hmm. That'd be three. I'm not trying to train you. <laughs> March 28th. Do <laughs> <laughs> you second? I second the motion. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Jeez, I can't believe 4 2 already. And I have nothing for Hales. Um, so we will go back into our Board of Commissioners meeting. 12 10. We have the approval of the minutes for March 28th. I'll make a motion to accept those. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Do you have the signature ones? Because we will sign them and, um, and make sure you pick up the basket. I know. <laughs> I'm going to stay right here. Okay. Um, there's the March 28th minutes that you just approved. There's the March 28th Hales location. And then these are the items that you approved last week. That need your signature. Okay. You can start them. Let me start yeah. down yeah. All right, I'll start down here. Bill, send it down here. All right. Thank you. And I'm, I'm just going to stand by this time. Okay, I'll start with you. <laughs> Make sure we have all of them. Sorry about that. Is it warm in here? Or is it, it is stuffy in here, I think. Yeah. 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 I think, Phil, this one needs your signature and then that one's done. You passed it last we week. We did. Yep. I've started to sign that, but it's got to be because we voted on it last. Oh, oh well, yeah. yeah. Just so the oh, minutes were good. approved on March 28th. I would be I guess so. You went here on the 21st, so you don't sign that one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Here, check it out. This one. Yeah. Whoops, I'm sorry. Yeah. I need to poke it. Payable, 
a manifest for April 2nd, $915,463.43. I'll make a, a And there is no it. payroll manifest this week because payroll isn't done. No. In time, so. Oh, I have a second. Okay. I made first. Okay. Excuse All me. those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. And the annual report, you have any? No, I'm waiting for one report okay. from finance and then I'll have it for you. Okay. Um, Will? The uh, bid recommendation? They have copies of everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, floor is yours, Will. Um, so I just had the two, two bids we had um, sent out. Uh, I think there was five or six that um, different places that uh, Underwood sent out to. Um, and actually none of those uh, came came back to respond that we directly solicited. Uh, these two, um, but I take that back, this uh, federal piping might have been one of them. Um, and then we had this other one who uh, does some work for us uh, as well. And so I had mentioned it to them that it was out and, and passed it on to them. And um, so they, both of them came to visit all the building. Uh, they looked at all the spots. Um, tight spots where we're putting these meters in, in the building, and um, asked lots of questions, and they both came back with their bids. Um, both numbers are very close. Uh, I think either one of them could have did the job excellent for us, um, as far as I can tell at this point. Um, I recommend, uh, I sent the letters uh, to Melissa yesterday, recommending that uh, Backflow Pro, um, he just he came in a little lower than the other one. Um, and he's, he, we have dealt with him, he's, he's worked on our backflows for years uh, from a different company and he started his own company. He's currently done some backflow testing for us just a uh, couple of months ago and so um, got to know him and I think he would do an excellent job uh, just as well as I think federal piping would have did an excellent job for us. Um, but like I said, he came in, I don't know if it was around 2000 or just shy of $2,000 difference. I mean, it was a really close bid. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, the nursing home. Uh, one will be after hours for sure. Um, and then we'll be, um, I'm going to be talking with uh, Sean later on to uh, see about the jail and whether we need to do that after hours. Um, so that does play a little bit of a difference in the exact number that it may come out depending on um, if they have to do them after hours or not. Bob was pretty confident that the admin in this building, and, and I am confident in my building, could be daytime um, installations. So that's the only thing. So as far as, um, you know, I know you guys normally make a, make a thing. I guess we would say, you could say that we would go with that price, but then maybe yeah. if there's a, after hours, that has to be installation that may, you know, affect the price or whatever. I don't know how you guys want to word that, but um, that's just something I wanted to give you guys a heads up on and, and uh, keep in mind. The prices, what are they? So, um, Backflow Pro came in at $38,454, and Federal Piping is a little tough to understand there stuff because they did a lot of uh, night pricing for different things, but I think they were basically, I remember, at around $40,186. Um, so like I said, we're looking at uh, $1,500, bucks. 2000 maybe was a really close, close bid. Um, do you have any idea what the price would go up if they have to do night? Work? So, I believe talking, uh, reading this and talking to, because uh, I called both of them for a little bit more clarification on some things, um, the Backflow Pro included in here, it says that the nursing home would definitely be at night. Um, 
he was very willing to, to go to the, the jail if that needs to be in the evening. I don't know if he'll charge a little more on that or not. I'm not 100 sure on that one. Um, and then the backflow, or I mean, uh, federal piping, basically was a difference of total difference of around five thousand dollars that they had to come at night. But that was like all the buildings. They listed out each building, um, and they also included their price at the nursing home already to be at night because I knew that for sure. Um, the day they both came, uh, Bob was was out there with us as well, and. Um, we talked and I just said, you know, make sure that you put the price in for that because that'll definitely be a given. And the other one, there have been clues the night for the nursing home because they know that's going to be a night, right? Right, the backflow pro, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, questions? Uh -huh. Motion approved. Uh, for the one for, that you recommend? For the, for, uh, yes, for uh, backflow pro. Okay. Uh, in the amount of, uh, what was it, Will, $38,454? Yes, sir. And do you give Will the ability to sign, sign the uh, contract? Okay. I second that motion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. When's the start date, roughly? Um, this month, I believe. I don't know the exact date, but he had put in there that they were looking to do this month. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll okay. notify them and get, a, get that going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, we're all set for that. Yep. Okay. You can talk. Okay. Any other questions for Will? Or? I think next week we're looking at coming to see you guys uh, with Underwood. Underwood, okay. Um, which will be kind of explaining where we've been and kind of the next steps that we're looking forward to. Uh, uh, I don't know if she's going to have the RFP with her or not, but the next RFP kind of that we're looking at doing with the uh, treatment building up there. And, our next step forward on that. Good. Thank you, Will. Thank you. You guys have a good day. You too. Oh, this is good. Oh, maybe they just fell out of the book. They're so ready to sign. So, um, Sean, I see you sitting over there. You have something for us that's not on the agenda. But yeah, just, just real quick for some moment of sure. time. Good afternoon. Okay. Enjoy the day before the storm hits, huh? <laughs> uh, come to you today, as you know, we have the bicycle program that we run, currently run next door over here, which we actually just started up another round of it starting today, oh, uh, which has been working out very well for us and for them. But uh, <clears throat> they are going to be doing a bicycle recycle program uh, May 4th from 10 a.m. to 1. Uh, so it's basically we're going to be accepting used bicycles to be donated um, for this program. The program then will you know, repair them, get them back into working condition, and then they donate them back out to the, to the public for recreational purposes, you know, those that can't afford them or whatever it might be. My question to you folks uh, today is looking for authorization if we can use just the front parking lot of the Annex building Saturday, May 4th from 10 a.m. to 1 just to do the collections of these bicycles. And there's a flyer here, um, a couple of them, if you'd like to see the flyer. That just kind of explains everything. <clears throat> so all I'm really looking like I said, I'm going to see if we can use the front parking lot to do the collection. And we'll when have is a charrette taking place? Should they like to do it? I don't know. We won't know that until... They're thinking of June. In June. Oh, okay. Until they I believe. Today. Yeah. Yeah, I... Okay. Is this, have they put an ad in the paper, by any, I wonder? I'm not sure. Um, I'll talk to Crystal on that. I know the supply was going to leave a flyer here with, uh, with yeah. Melissa. Thought maybe we could put it on our website, too, and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, to get it out there? Yeah. Maybe even utilize the power of Facebook, you know, something like That's that. That's true. Will this go strictly to Carroll County people? Right, you know, the yes, primarily it's within the county. Yeah. Some of these bicycles we leave at our facility that are repaired, ready to go. So individuals that we're releasing that don't have transportation home, they actually, here, take a bike, use it, go home. <laughs> um, so so right, they're hey. not walking. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, comments? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. 
I, ha I see no problem. Yeah, no problem. Okay. All right. So, should we take a vote just to make yeah. it? We make a motion that we okay. uh, allow the uh, recycle program for May. What is it? May 4th, sir. May 4th. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 You're all set. Excellent. Thank you. Do you want these back in case you need them? Well, yeah, I can always just uh, actually I'll send one to Melissa. So. Okay. Thank you. No Have problem. That out. Have that out. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all I need. So we make sure. Thank you. Oh, it says right. Thank you. Okay. We have nothing else then until they come at one. Okay. I guess we will go into recess until one o'clock. Twelve twenty-four. Probably because yeah, we got these. Yeah. Need that sign, Commissioner Nelson. Uh, is that correct? And um, Representative McConkie is coming to it. Okay. Somebody's asking if you can hear them. Well, it works. I already just asked the question. Yeah, I don't know who's reading it. Is there a meeting in one minute? It's Army. Okay. Derek Quinn presents. Okay. Twelve fifty-eight. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, Starfleet officer, yeah. I'm always in my right. Are you, are you I was, yes. Representative McConkey, Representative Brown, Commissioner Nelson, and we discussed the possibility of the Housing Coalition uh, hosting a charrette on the county land. Um, the committee voted unanimously to support the idea of um, hosting the charrette should the Housing Coalition select us, select our land for that purpose, um, with the condition that um, any prime ag soil be excluded from the areas under consideration. Um, we felt that was important just because that's, um, you know, for, for me personally, I felt that was important because I think we need to preserve that. What, whatever we do with the county farm now, we need to preserve that resource for the people of the county into the future. I think also it could just potentially create controversy that's not necessary. So we felt it was important that that be excluded um, from the areas under consideration. Um, I think the other important piece to understand about a charrette 
and I'll turn it over to Josh in a minute to talk a little bit more about the process that his team would propose, is that this is not a project proposal. Right. I've this been is, to some. Sure. Server. I think I've been to a housing one before. Oh, yeah. So okay. it's a visioning process. It's an imagining what could happen on the land. It's understanding what the barriers would be to, if we ever wanted to move forward with any kind of housing project on this land. And I support it, and I don't want to speak for the whole committee, but I support it because I think if we ever want to do a project, a housing project on the land, this gives us a baseline. It gets in the right experts to understand what would need to happen to move forward, what would need, um, what the parameters of a project would need to look like to make it economically feasible for a developer to consider. Um, and then there's no commitment. You know, this is, it helps us get more information. Um, and we don't really put any skin in the game other than we say that they can do it on, our, on the county land. Um, I see this as an opportunity to begin a process of public input. And I think if the commissioners were to decide to move forward, I think it's important that when we're communicating about this externally, we make sure that that's the message. That this is not, here's the project we are going to do. It's this is the beginning of a public input process to see what the community wants us to do with this land and what a housing project would look like, and if so, what the community desires out of it. So that's my brief introduction. Mark, I don't know if you would add. So we have Richard, too. I, I never, I did not anticipate being here Thursday, so these two gentlemen uh, agreed to come and speak to you. Uh, so I, I guess I'd probably, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, I have, um, I have participated in several charrettes. The largest was the Route 16 um, in West Ossipi, um, and bringing a lot of stakeholders uh, in one place, having a conversation. Uh, when we, we get talking with the Mount Washington Housing Authority, I've, I've said and we've echoed that while this charrette is, is going to be speaking on it, we also want the opportunity to be able to speak about our whole parcel and how important the farmland is to us and how in the future, you know, that might fit in. So um, I want to make sure that we, as the delegation with the commissioner's approval, have input into how, how this is processed. We don't want anyone to think that when we're done here, we're carving up uh, 500 acres and we're starting to build houses. That's, that's not what's going on here. I guess if it's all right with you, David, I'd, I'd see if Richard has something to say. Thanks, folks. Um, I would basically echo what David and Mark have said. Our committees worked for quite a while on determining what we thought was feasible, what we thought was reasonable. But I think the big thing, and we've had uh, several commissions sit in on some of our meetings, um, so I appreciate that. But the idea is to make sure that the commissioners are in agreement that this is the way we want to go first. And then also, as uh, David and Mike uh, spoke about, having the charrettes to make sure we have the community buy-in on this before we move forward. And the idea is to look at what we think are the appropriate uses for the county land, and not like we're going to use the whole property to develop, but we want to make sure that we're utilizing the, uh, the county land appropriate, like uh, I think Mark uh, indicated, uh, maybe try and get the, uh, the land back into farm production, hay production, that type of thing, um, through the community not necessarily through the, uh, through, the, through the county itself doing the work, but also look at what, uh, what's feasible, what's reasonable uh, moving forward. And I know Peters and his group is going to work with us to try and develop the charrette process and make sure that we go uh, in a number of places throughout the county to get the right input. So I, I think uh, the lands committee is in agreement on what we want to do, but we want to make sure that the Commission is uh, absolutely in agreement as well before we spend more time and resource on this. Thank you. Questions before we turn it over to Josh? Um, I don't have any. Phil? I've been through some of this. <laughs> I have no. Okay. Not yet. Josh, would you mind walking the commissioners through um, some of the documents you prepared in terms of timeline, etc.? Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. I guess first, it, it sounds like you're all familiar with the Charette 
with charrettes. Yes. 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 Okay, so let's, and thank you very much for having me here today. Um, what, I, my name's Josh Bruston, and I'm the board chair of the Mount Washington Valley Housing Coalition. And uh, this is the first charrette we've done since 2021. What is so, what's so potentially exciting about this particular charrette is, is being on county land. It's such an opportunity to, uh, because it's county land, it's an opportunity to reach out to all the communities within the county. And I don't believe there's a community that isn't, you know, it has not been affected by, by affordable housing. Um, so this is a very unique opportunity for us, one which we have not had before. And what we typically will do is we, we form a steering committee. It's made up of housing coalition uh, board members, and then we'll bring in realtors from outside. We will pinpoint, we, we, we've determined we want Ossipi to be the area. Um, we'll take a look at three parcels of, we'll pick out three parcels of land. In this case, the county land is what would be one of them. We have basically a checklist that we go through that says, uh, does this check all the boxes for a property that we think would be, would, would accommodate a charrette and would be beneficial to the town. In this case, it would be the county. Um, we pick the one that checks the most boxes and then we move forward with that, with that property. We then will, uh, th this is this month, is, that's happening this month. Then in, um, in May, we really get down to work, which is we start getting all of our, our stakeholders together. Every, everybody that we think, we feel is an important part of the development process, we will, uh, we will bring in. So it, it's typically an architect, uh, a banker, um, an engineer, uh, realtors, uh, uh, people who help write zoning. And what we like to do is we do it within the community that we're we emphasize bringing people in from the community that we are, uh, where we're conducting the charrette. So in this case, it would be the Ossipi area, but if it's the county land, it would be, we could we could pull people in from all, all over the place. Again, a very unique uh, unique opportunity in this case. So we have this group that we that we get together, that we brought, we bring together. And what we typically do is we have a day that we will, uh, we'll have a public meeting and the public and the community that we're, we're, where we are doing the charrette, we will have a public meeting where the community can come out and let us know, and when I say us, those who will be putting together the charrette, they give us an opportunity, they, it's an opportunity for the community to weigh in and say, this is what we'd like to see happen with this particular property. This is what we feel is important, this is what we want, this is what we don't want. In the case of the county land, that may include going to, instead of just doing one public uh, information session, say at Hobbs Tavern in Ossipi, maybe we do it at two or three different locations within the county um, to, get, to get public input on what they'd like to see happen with the county land. And uh, from there, we then go out uh, to the property, we walk it, not with the public, this is just our group, the group that's gonna actually be, gonna be putting together the charrette, or preparing the charrette. We then go to the land, uh, we walk it, and then the following day, we have a, a typically it's a one day work session, which we will. Uh, it's really fun. I was I was involved in 2021, and I have a, a a really cool video link that I'm happy to share with you. I shared it with David. I'd be happy to share it with you as well. But it in 2020 2021 it was a pandemic, so we had we had the whole process uh, video, and it's a really well produced um, uh, that walks you basically from the start to the finish of a charrette and the presentation to the community through social media and through different outlets of that charrette. It's a really great way to see what we did that day. But we'll basically have a one day work session where we'll take that property, we will uh, try to get the best use of it based on what on the input that we've received from the community and also in this case the, um, uh, the commissioners. And we then say this is what we can do with the property, this is what, uh, this is what we'll currently accommodate if we, uh, and this is how zoning would have to change in order to get the, the most use of it, uh, the most affordable housing on it, and then we actually put a cost to it. And it's, it's, a, it's a broad brushstroke exercise, meaning you couldn't take this to like a developer and say, here you go, you've got everything you need to get this going. What it does is it gives you, it gives you an overview of what can be done with that property, and based on current zoning, um, and then costs applied to it, 
And uh, at the end of the day, you get a fairly good idea of where you stand based on current zoning ordinances, and then what you could potentially do uh, if some changes were made. And it's a, it's a, for those who are visual, visually oriented, it's a great way to, uh, to put on paper visually what's, what a project could look like. And the idea is that developers aren't doing these things for free. They have to be able to uh, make money, make their profit. And so this is, a, this is an exercise based on reality. And the hope is that something like this can turn into reality and doesn't just become an exercise in futility. And that is the goal. I'm particularly, and the board is particularly excited about, not to say that we would def definitely choose the county land, but we would choose the county, the county land. It's a perfect opportunity. Um, it's a large parcel. It's multi-use. Uh, it, serves, it, it serves as many, many different um, towns within Carroll County. And, the, and they're all within commuting distance, um, and it's within the commuting distance of many of these towns. So for so many reasons, it works great. Um, and uh, so you know, the, the, the possibility of having your endorsement uh, would be just incredible. So um, I hope that's not too long-winded of an answer to your question. Wait, I think we can. Are there questions if we want? Or where? Oh, well, I'm devil's advocate here. <laughs> That's my role. Uh, is it basically boiled down to free land that you don't have to buy it if you, somebody would have to buy it if you go somewhere else? No, but it, fact, it factors in. So the, the charrette we did in 2021 was a property off the Hankamagas Highway uh, on town water and town sewer. And that also weighs into this as well. Uh, what can and can't be done. That property was list, was was actively listed on the market. It had been listed for quite a while. Had not sold. It had the right size, and it was on uh, Town Water Town Sewer, and it was priced. It was a market price. It was not a free property. Obviously, free land or or a, a greatly discounted land would would increase the odds of a developer developer being able to do what they need to do to make a profit. So you effectively be subsidizing the project, the county would be subsidizing the project to some degree with the land. Am I correct in assuming that? Not necessarily. I, I'm not sure what the, what the county's plan would be for the land. But uh, that would, what we'll show at the end of the day is we'll show a profit margin for a developer based on the costs. That profit margin will shift up or down depending on the cost of the land. So it'll be it'll be factored, but it won't be ex it won't be assumed. Representative Brown has his hand raised. Go ahead, Representative Brown. Thanks. Thanks. So I guess um, that's one of the things that I know our committee had spoken about whether the land would be leased, whether it would be sold to a developer, or what that would be. And that's I think part of the thing where we were coming to the commission as far as to decide what they thought was the appropriate use of the land in regard to that. And Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, we hadn't made any kind of decision on that, but we'd spoken about it. And by the way, Josh, I apologize for calling you Peter before there was someone online below you, Peter, and I go, what, that's Peter, not Josh? Okay. But anyway, the idea was that that uh, we need to figure out how we would want to do this. And as Mark indicated uh, originally, this is something that we want to start slow to figure out really what we want to do, and Mark, maybe you can talk about that uh, a little bit more in a minute, but also I think, uh, and I don't think we clarified this yet, but I know um, kind of from the lands committee perspective, we're looking at more than just the uh, housing issue, and as the chairman, I, Mark, maybe you could uh, speak more on this, but the idea is we want to look at a number of things, like Mark said, putting the farm kind of back into production, in a number of ways, hay in other ways, um, possibly the uh, the daycare, which I think David can speak to uh, more, uh, upgrading the sewer and water on the county property. And, um, you know, we haven't even decided or laid this out as far as whether or not it would be a, a kind of group septic fear like they do in a lot of projects. Mark, I you know you can talk about that more and maybe we can provide the water for the facility when we do upgrade the water for the uh, water system for the county. So 
I think those are a couple things that we want to discuss during the charrette process. Um, although Josh and his group is going to help us with the, um, I guess, the housing development part of it, we, I thought we were going to speak about those three items at least, Mark. Go ahead, Dave, first. David? So I think my take is Commissioner McGee's question and Josh's answer are exactly why I support a charrette. Right, I think it's the kinds of questions that we have been kind of talking in circles in committee for a year, I don't know how long we've been assembling, are these very detailed questions. Like, what, you know, do we need to have a discount on the land to make it worthwhile for a developer? And these are the kinds of questions that I think this process can give us information on. And until we do that, until we get the right people in the room, until we have the banker and the developer and all of these different stakeholders, figuring out what, what it would take, we are kind of just grasping at straws. So for me, this is a research process. And that's what, it, with, the, with, with the right experts. And that's what makes it appealing to me. So, if I may, um, so these experts, they're gonna do all this for, for nothing or is there a cost? And if there's a cost, uh, who pays for the cost? The, uh, the, the, there's no cost. Everybody volunteers their time to take part in this process. Uh, it's a really, it's a, a really fulfilling. Uh, I think it's it's a really fulfilling process, and, and people really enjoy doing it. We have certain costs that are um, you know, just certain costs of, of putting the shred on. Those are through we we fund those through our own, our own resources. So there's no cost to the county. If, if I could follow up, Madam Chairman, the the um, anytime the word housing is brought in, affordable housing, workforce housing, it, it brings a certain stigma of what's trying to be provided. Our emphasis on the lands committee is what can we do to bring a stronger workforce and uh, a community that works here. Can we, can we help in aiding housing for them? Um, can we, uh, would it be of assistance and help us recruit if we had daycare? Um, so those are, those are some of the things we're looking at. I, I believe when we get into the process with the developers and that Josh has been speaking of, um, I, I definitely would stay away from the word subsidized. I don't, I don't like the word. Um, we, Josh had mentioned previously that they'd done a shred off the Kangamanga somewhere, and part of the draw for that parcel was the size of the parcel, the cost of the parcel, but it had a connection to water and sewer. Great development, less cost. Uh, we don't have that. We might have a possibility of maybe some sewer, but we, we know we don't have water. But what the county is blessed with is hundreds of acres that could contain uh, community well field, and it might, it might offer uh, sewage. So those things um, would be advantageous to the developer. And how, and how that comes about, we could, we could work that out in this process and see if that makes sense to the developers. I, it's going in wide open, uh, not that we're going to bring in hundreds of units, that is not our intent, but by doing a build out, which will be part of what this process is be, uh, we, we can then find out what the scale of it needs to be and what the future potential is. I think it's an opportunity we should not pass on. I, I don't want to be, I, I, I mean, I don't want this to appear negative, but you have a parcel of land that's owned by the taxpayers of Carroll County that's worth X amount of dollars. And if you sell it or give it away or let somebody use it for any less than market value, you're subsidizing whatever enterprise we do. So you may not like the word subsidize, but that's really what it comes down to. So then it becomes a matter of who gets the benefit of that in terms of who's going to get the ultimate benefit of who lives in a place. And, and then I have all kinds of questions, which is who's going to run it? Who's, are we going to have another bureaucracy that does overseas housing? Are we going to have who's going to, who's going to manage it? Who's going to live there? 
But I think before we do any of that, I think we have to come to some kind of decision of are we willing to let somebody use the land, buy the land, or whatever, before we spend a whole lot of time doing this. And I'm not sure we've talked about that at this point. No, I mean, as a commission, we have not. No. And it's really up to us to kind of decide whether, I mean, if you want to develop workforce housing, we could can sell the land to a developer if you want to. Now, I think we all know the problem with that. You probably can't afford to build workforce housing if you sell the market value. So then it becomes, do you want to, do you, what would be the best interest of the county and the people who live in the county? I, I don't have the answer to that, by the way. Do you, I, I'm no, I don't either. Just but asking you, the question. Do you have any particular pieces of property that you have in mind? Where you're going to do this, Charette, or you do, or you don't? I think don't we know, know where we're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wendy Scribner has been putting together some pretty comprehensive GIS maps, which I would recommend that if the commissioners choose to move forward, that we provide to the Housing Coalition. Um, but I think, I think these are the questions that this process explores. Um, and I, I understand, I under, I understand your uh, caution, in not wanting us to move too too far before a, commi a commitment has been made. I'd also say it's sort of a chicken and egg. We have to ask these questions. We have to go out, for example, to the public and say, do you want workforce housing on this land, taxpayers? Do you want us to? Is this how you want to leverage this public resource? But we also need to go out and ask that question, and this is a process for doing that. So. Well, I'd be interested also to know, just as an aside, you, you mentioned you want to get back in the farm, farm business. If, if that's what the people will, yes. We have to have people that are willing to come and want to do that. But we also want to preserve the prime agricultural land so that development doesn't happen. What's happened in the past, every time we've built a, a building, we've always gone right on top of the best farming land. We did it with the courthouse. We did it, we did it again with that building. So we, we'd like to be able to preserve what we have what's the best that we have. I didn't mean to interrupt, sir. No, that's quite all right. No, I'm just, I, I'm, I mean, I have, followed the, I have followed the lands committee, and I think it's, it's a noble effort. I, I, and I don't want to look want it to appear that I don't think it is. I, I, for, 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 just from a practical standpoint, there are a lot of things that have to be decided. And I think the first thing is, it, is the land available? Do we want to give up the land? Is, that, is this what we want to do with it? Um, I think that's something we have to determine. Yeah, I think that's something we have to determine as a, as, a, as a commission. Um, I mean, it would seem it, it's a lot of acreage to be to have yeah. sitting there, obviously. Um, if we do this, Charette, there's no obligation to continue. This is a fact-binding process. Yes, Representative I, I, Brown. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I think I would just say, I would say that this, the decision point right now is not, do you want to do this with the land? It's, are you open to exploring the possibility of doing this with the land? David? Comment? Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I saw him shaking his oh. head, and I saw him shaking his head while I... Oh. Representative Brown? Yeah, so I, I just want to go back to something we've talked about a number of times, and initially when, when I got on the delegation, and we were talking about the property itself, we've been approached by some people that were interested in doing daycare in the county and they didn't have land available to do that. And there were going to be grants available, and Mark, jump in and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but there were grants available that we could utilize and that they were going to apply for the grants to put a daycare center on the county property if we had property available to do that. And that uh, we had a large need 
uh, for daycare in the county. The daycare centers are closing down, and we're trying to make sure that the people that are in the county have the availability of daycare, including uh, our nurses, uh, maybe sheriff's deputies, those types of LPNs and everything else that would possibly help with retention and maybe reduce our uh, uh, contracted service fees for, for nursing. So by making a certain number of acres available, one, two acres or whatever, that are not in an area that would be used for farming, that this entity would uh, get grant money and build a daycare center on the county property with the intention of the county never running that facility, but that would be run by an outside agency and that it would be uh, built uh, by the outside uh, interest through grant money. But it would be on county property and it would be utilized for all the residents of the county as well as county employees. So that was one of the first things that uh, I ended up getting involved in and part of what the lands committee was looking at. Then I know we, you know, we had the whole hay process, which we've gone back and forth over time with whether the county should be doing it, whether we should have someone outside bid to do that. And then the issue came up, uh, and I think the commissioners have decided to allow people from outside the county itself, not outside the county, but the county itself not to do that work, but to have people bid on, on that work. So I think that's progress. And then the issue came up about the group house and whether or not we would allow people to have small parcels available to farm. And I don't know what has been finally discussed or decided from the commissioners on that. But these are the uses that, that came up. And we also came up with the possibility of housing um, uh, tiny, tiny homes or whatever, small homes under, what was it, my 400, 500 square feet that could be utilized by our employees or by, uh, and also to address, uh, address some of that uh, contract to cost issue and maybe allow our employees to have access to, to, uh, to living uh, accommodations on the county property. And the whole thing was that we were gonna do this in a slow, methodical way so that we could see how or if it would work for what the commissioners um, are tasked to do as far as maintaining the property and utilizing the property effectively. So we talked about whether that property would be leased, whether it would be owned, what the size of the properties that the homes would be, um, and all that type of thing. Some people are saying, oh, we don't want to have three bedroom homes on it, on the company property, and we're just going to give the property. That's not what the intent of this was. The idea was to explore options, and I think that's the intent with, uh, and part of the way we got involved with Josh was, okay, how can we help with a potential housing for people in the, in the county since there is a very large shortage, and Carroll County is the fastest growing county in the state. So those are just three options that, or three or four options that we've looked at on the lands committee. And we're looking for the commissioners to say, okay, what's appropriate for us to move forward? I understand what Chuck's saying, and I typically the same way. I'm not giving county land away to people for free. That's not what the plan is. It's to address a need that we have in the county and for the commissioners to decide which way we should go to, to address these things that for all county residents and to help our county um, people flourish. So um, I'm not trying to get in the weeds on this, but I, I appreciated what Josh's group is interested in doing to help us do a charrette to, uh, as the commissioner just said, to explore these ideas without having to make a commitment. But I think it's a need and uh, as the county delegation is willing to support doing the work to move forward, just like Josh's group, and then make a determination to the commissioners what is and what isn't appropriate to move forward with, if anything. Okay. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when, uh, when Commissioner Nelson joined our, our lands advisor commitment a few months ago, and uh, 
if you don't mind the informality, Bill says, you know, I, I've sat, I've sat around a table, and I think this is the third time we've done it. It's deja vu once again, and we're getting nowhere. We still think we have all the same issues, but we're not plowing forward. The opportunity that Josh's group brings forward to us will at least get us heading in the right direction. The four of us could go out and we could meet in uh, Moultonboro again, we could meet in Conway again, and we're going to come back with a bunch of we don't knows. This is going to be a wonderful opportunity to take advantage of this professional staff that we would never agree to pay for, and let's bring them in one room and let's talk about a vision. As, as the, Madam Chairman said, we don't have to agree going forward. I've been to many charrettes that haven't gone forward, but parts of them have been something to aspire in the future to do. So. I, I would hope we could move off center, have control, be in the room when this planning is happening, which I had, I had spoken previously when we met with, uh, with this housing group, so that we, we know where we're going with it. Um, but I, I would hope that we could move forward with it. Are you looking for an answer from us today, or can we well, have some I, time I, to... I, I think his timeline is off is approaching awfully quick. I would say no more than seven days, and okay, that so excludes we, snowstorms or casual events, anything. So we would have time to discuss this and get back to you within a, a matter of a few days? Unless okay. you want something today. I don't know. Are you ready to make a decision today? No. I am, but that's fine. But I do think we should discuss it here. Give some time to think about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, what would the decision be in terms of what, if we're willing? If you want to go through if, with the charrette, yeah. Well, I think we've got to decide what, if we can they give up the land. I think we've got to decide what, what we want to do with the land. Are we going to do a lot of work before we figure out, are we willing to give up the land? Are we willing to give up the land at less than market value? And I mean, I, I don't know. To me, we're, we're putting the cart before the horse. What do we want to do with the land? The land's sitting there right now. We have X amount of land. Somebody, somebody I have a couple of final thoughts. Go ahead. Uh, when, it, when, it, when the time's appropriate. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. So I just want to emphasize that this is a uh, this is not a closed door uh, procedure. This is very open, and or, you know, maybe the most important component is that this is open to the public. The public is going to get to weigh in. The towns of uh, the towns within Carroll County will get to weigh in on what they'd like done uh, to see done with the county land. They'll have plenty of input, and a lot of what we do will be based on that on that input. And it would be great to have you know it would be great to have uh, one of you all involved in the process so you can see it from start to finish. But it's it's, it's simply about it's really about education, and I can only speak to where I live, which is Conway, and um, the the yeah, the the median household price right now in Conway is four hundred seventy nine thousand dollars, and the median income in Conway is fifty nine thousand dollars. You have to make $120,000 a year to be able to purchase a home in Conway right now. So, what? And I know a number of the other towns in Carroll County are are um, the second home areas as well, where the second home purchaser is going to way outspend the locals. And so, in many ways, the in Conway, and it's it's sad, but the door, you know, door the door to to affordable housing for not just for our our our. Uh, workforce who are uh, in the service industry, but it's close to incoming doctors, lawyers, engineers, uh, middle management, um, nurses, teachers. That door is closed right now. So we're going to start seeing population decline, and we won't be able to service or have a healthy community. And I would imagine that is the same case with you know, the majority of the towns around Carroll County. So the county land is an opportunity to uh, you know, not only see what's viable there, but it's an opportunity to educate all these towns because the, the solution is a complicated one. And it's not a, there's no silver bullet to this. There are many components that have to happen to create this housing that's desperately needed um, to have a healthy community in all of our towns within Carroll County. So this is an opportunity for the public to weigh in, for the public to get educated, and to see what, what it would take to solve what is you know, really a very uh, complicated and immediate problem. 
And so I just don't want to lose sight of the fact this is not the, the two shreds I've been involved in. We did not end up doing anything on the land we did, we did this on. This is just a high profile property to be able to you know, educate the community. And then your goals will be your goals for the land. Uh, our job is to bring everybody in to see what can be done. For me personally, I whether to go for not forward with the strip, but forward on anything would be what pieces of property are we going to be talking about? You know, at, at the end of the charrette, what pieces of property are we going to be talking about before? I mean, it, falls, it falls on us as the commissioners just yep. because it does fall on us to make the decision. But it impacts the whole county and, it, and the county, all the residents of the county are owners of the land, right. technically. So um, I, yeah. I mean, if you if you want to do a charrette and tell everybody what's feasible, I guess you could do that. But at the end of the day, it will come down to do we want to give up, right. the, right. do we want to give yes. up the land? That's what it's going to come, and, going to come down to. And we can listen to everybody and then it's up to whoever's on the commission at that point to decide whether they want to whether they want to do that or not. I mean, based on um, Josh's comments, he's right. The average entry level house now is about five hundred thousand dollars, and you don't see them being you don't see too many being built because the entry level people can't afford them. So then, and I know it's a horrible word, and you don't like it, but at the end of the day, if you want to offer people housing for less than that. Somebody's got to subsidize it in some form or fashion, uh, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying, do we, and if the people of Carroll County decide they want to give away the land, that's their call. I mean, I'd prefer not to make that call myself because it's not my land. I mean, as a commissioner, yeah. as a commissioner, can I make the call? Sure. I, I listen to everybody and do what's best. Try and do what's best because that's what we're elected to do. In my case, appointed to do. <laughs> but, but. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, what is the rush right this minute? When when is the what's the time element that you want to start this? Is, is that well, they, my understanding is Josh is talking about in May pulling pulling this process together and pull, they're they're going to meet internally during this month if I understand the timeline and, and decide if they're going to do a charrette where they're going to do the charrette whether we want to be considered or not. And then if, if they decide that it makes sense to hold the charrette and then that they, to use the county property, then in May they're going to start pulling the team together. So uh, if, if this is a decision that would take two weeks to, to gut through, I think we're done. I'm, 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 well, here's, here's, here's the question. The, the three, for lack of a better word, population centers, are North Conway, Wolfboro, and the Moultonboro area. We're, we're, it's fairly busy. So if we're going to use this piece of land, it's in Ossipee. So anybody, any, anybody that's going to use that housing for those three areas is going to have to drive away. So I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it makes sense to use the county land based on just geographically where it's located. And maybe it does. I mean, people do drive to work, but how far is it for you to get to North Conway? 45 minutes? Yep. At least Moulton fairly close. Well, Burroughs a half an hour away. So I, I, I guess was that the thought, Josh? This is centrally located in the county. Yeah, I think I think the idea is that the, based on our based on our research, a forty minute commute. If you can, if there's an opportunity for home ownership, a forty a forty minute commute is is very doable. Could we ask Josh when they're meeting as an April fifteenth? Yeah, that's fine. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. When is your meeting in April? It's a move, it's a moving target. The the okay. goal for the charrette is to do it at the end of June, okay. and so we just need we need just enough time to, to to get all our ducks in a row research wise to make sure it's to make sure it's effective. That's why the timeline gets a little tight um, because we want to make sure we do it right, and that we and that the people who are going to commit to it have time to get it on their schedules since they're since they're donating their time. Are there any grants or anything in this process that's helping cut the cost for doing it? You know, you have a deadline. To actually buy. put the shred on? Yes, to put it on, yes. Yeah, well, so we, we typically seek, uh, we seek sponsorship, so we, get a, we typically get a grant from the, uh, the National Association of Realtors has always given us a grant, and then we also seek just sponsorships from our, from within the community. 
so that the cost is, is uh, typically it's not it's, we're not talking we're talking seventy five hundred dollars total. So we're we're able to uh, to find those funds. Bill, what's your plan? Do you want to Bye -bye. have a few days to talk about it, or are you ready to make a decision today? I will make. I have concerns. I've expressed that at the meetings that we have. And one of them is regarding the schools. Possibly, how do they feel with these people coming in and pays what taxes and all that? I have that concern, but that I guess would come out in a shred. So that's one of the, the pluses to it. Um, and I agree with some of the things that both of you have said, that Chuck has said, and everything else. Where you, um, I don't know. I think so it's what would this, what would you what would you what would be the determining factor for you on what to do with the land? Me? Put me on the spot. <laughs> for me, it would be what piece of property and what the taxpayers and these public meetings, what they would like. Do they think that that's something that they want to do? They want to do because it's their property. Or do they not want to do it? So I think we would. Yeah, we can't do that in a week. That's no, that's, that's what I'm saying, but we can, we can decide whether to go with the charrette. Can do the charrette? Yeah, I have no problem with that either. Would that make you happy to take? <laughs> it would make me happy, but I don't want. But it's not my choice. So. I know. As long as, if, as, long if, as I might, if I might, commissioners, just Richard Brown for a moment. Okay. So I just want to address the fact that we did look at uh, what land we would look at. We haven't identified a particular pass, but we worked with Web, uh, Wendy Scribner on this, and we're looking at uh, parcels of property around uh, the county property. That are not prime farmland. You know, they, uh, we've right. identified a potential place up by the current office building for both, both uh, uh, housing and for um, the daycare use, which are not uh, really uh, usable for farming. Uh, and, and the other idea about this is these are needs that have been brought to us uh, for the county, for uh, including the employees, like I mentioned. We have a large contract cost for agency uh, nurses right now. And the possibility would be that if we helped with daycare, which we would not, um, which would not be certainly on prime farm property, it might make uh, our retention and the ability to attract nurses and L LNAs or something easier. So we can address that high cost. The other thing with housing, which you know, I, I mentioned earlier is that we would look at an area of the property that is not used or would not be used in the future for farm or anything like that. And that, you know, we might do five to 10 small units to see how that, that would work. All In all these cases, the land could either be leased or sold on the perimeter, which would not impact the long-term effect on the county property and if there was any issue with that, that that probably would revert back to the county. So I think we have flexibilities with that, and the idea would be to start out small with uh, any type of housing that we did, and it would certainly not be on uh, prime property for the county. And, and again, I mentioned that we do have a major housing shortage in the county, and we do have a major issue with the uh, with agency costs for our nursing, and also for the ability for us to get uh, Sheriff deputies and those types of things to, to work where we currently sit on the county property. So that's it for me. Thanks. I, no, go ahead. Another question. Uh, I asked you folks to, to answer this or I uh, mind. Who would you expect to prep the property? In other words, say it's where there's trees and they have to cut them down and get the roots out and all that. Who would cover that cost? It would be a development cost. Not okay. the county. Not the county. <laughs> Not the county. <laughs> But that's one of those costs, those developer costs that I think a charrette would explore. You yeah. know, what needs yeah. to happen to make this viable? I'm trying to think of questions people are going to have that's throwing them out. I'm kind of concerned because I've been involved with daycares before, um, not housing, but daycares. Um, is liability. If we have a daycare that's maybe not on prime property but is on the complex, you know, we have a jail here, we have a sheriff's department, we have the courthouse across the street. Who knows what might a 
eventually happen someday, and then we have a daycare in the middle of all that. So that also concerns me uh, about sure. That's why I say it depends on what piece of property we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, I think so. we can talk separately about day, yeah. the daycare piece okay. whenever we want to conclude the discussion of the Shrek piece. And well, it's also housing, too, because you're going to have families. So that concerns me a little. I, but as a general, just thinking out loud, something which isn't always good. Uh, <laughs> after, it, assuming we do the charrette, I would be more inclined to just sell the property. Yeah. That, that, I, I, I don't think the county needs to be involved in running anything. I mean, if, if it's determined that... Yes. This is, and again, this is me talking. And I agree. I don't it, think it, we if, gonna, if, if, if we think it's a good, if it, and, and we being the residents of Carroll County, not me, decide that this is the way to go, then we determine if we want to give somebody a less than market price on the property, and you sell it and let it, and, and turn it loose. I, I, I just don't think it's our, it, it, our being the county's job to run housing or anything else. I, I actually agree with you on that. And I think probably most, maybe yeah. unanimously on the Lands Committee, we feel that way. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the, the question is, how does the public feel about it? And yes. what kind of housing? And this is a process. Can we, make, can we make a difference? That's it. My, my question is, can we build enough housing to make a difference? We I mean, can't any, solve it any alone, house right? is, anything you build is obviously beneficial and helpful. But I, th I think back to Richard's point, a key factor and why the committee was assembled is how can we leverage this public asset to, f to further our county goals. So if we are having trouble with recruitment and retention of staff, can the availability of adjacent workforce housing help us with that? So that was sort of if we rewind back to why was the committee originally formed, those were the motivating questions, if that makes any sense. So no, we're not going to solve all of Carroll County's housing problem on right. one parcel of land, but can we make a difference very locally here at the complex and do our little piece to help chip away at the larger problem? So. I mean, it appears from everything that I've been involved in or part of or watched, the only way that you make it affordable is to do some type of cluster housing or close, close, where you where you put a lot of houses in a smaller footprint. Um, and, and that, and of course, then you get into zoning planning and all the other things that go on in towns, uh, which is an always easy to do. But that would seem to be probably the only way you'd be able to do it: take a piece of a piece of land and try and do something like that. And I think, I think the charrette will get you there. You also have to understand that the town of Ossipee has just received a grant on their zoning on how, on, on specifically tailored on housing. This, I, I work um, as a land consultant throughout the region, Winnipesaukee and, and so forth. The town of Ossipee over the years has retooled their, their uh, zoning ordinance to be just what's needed for uh, housing to increase housing. Uh, they they have uh, they have reworked their cluster development. They've reworked the number of units, um, three and five units to a parcel. They they are very we are in the right place to do this. If we were saying we were if this county was sitting in Conway, if this was sitting in Moultonboro or some of the other towns. Their zoning wouldn't even permit us to have this conversation. They'll, we'll come through this process, and Josh will come to a point, his people and everything else, what is that right number? What's that right number of units in, in an acre or five acres or whatever it is? And then part of that analysis will be, what does your zoning look like today? Could that, could that happen in those parcels? And if it couldn't, what would it take to do that? Or does this make absolutely no sense? We don't want two acre parcels because you know that's not going to work. We end up with all these driveways and everything else. So your premise is exactly correct. The town of Ossipee is the right place to have the conversation because they have the building blocks in place. 
And the other big piece of it is obviously the water and the sewer, because if you're going to do cluster housing, you can't do individual septic systems or wells, which is another whole. I mean, but I, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's not a good idea to talk about it. Yeah. But I think we all know what the challenges are. I don't know how you make those go away necessarily. Can we, if if I could, Mr. Chairman, I'll get off yes. it. We we had we had gone through and done some land calculations. Uh, prior on, you know, how many gallons per day for housing, how many gallons a day for uh, a child care and everything else. And the numbers will surprise you how small that really is. A daycare with 138 kids, 16 employees, and 46 uh, catered lunchroom is only a matter of six, under 600 gallons a day. 600 gallons a day, and then we looked at what the analysis is of our soil, and Wendy and the soil conservation people uh, will work with us. If, if, if the development was here, and the sewer maybe was over here, and we worked around, and our well location was over there, it comes together. But we, and part of our grant that we want to talk about being able to pursue is what is our sewer capacity today? How much extra capacity is there? And getting a planning grant to do that. Not necessarily to create sewer for a housing project, but you know, do we have enough to even do what we're doing? The initial estimate was that we might have 7,000 gallons extra capacity. Well, if a daycare only takes 600, we have, we have a lot of potential county growth there, but we need to find that. I think we've gone around and around. I mean, are you, do we need to take an official vote to let them have this issue? I'll make a motion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh. If, you, if you want to recognize it. Right. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, they keep talking about parcels. Uh, do they have an idea of how many acres they're talking about that, that they'd be looking at with the county plan? So no acreage. At all, less than 900 acres. <laughs> it, it's we're, we're not we're not even looking. I'm not even imagining that we're using talking about a quarter of the acreage. Right, but I you keep saying parcels. You know, is that parcel that you plan to to do this with? Is it a 20 acre parcel? Is it a 100 acre parcel? Is it a 200 acre parcel? Yes. Uh, I don't know that answer. Okay. What, 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 when they get through the process and developers talk about it and zoning talk about it, there is going to be a certain number that's going to make sense. Well, and I think that would be helpful to the, the Carroll County taxpayers the, that own this land. And I do agree that if it's something that the Carroll County residents decide to do, I think the county should sell the land and, you know, let them have it. I mean, if they have to bring in their own water, bring in their own sewage, Correct. so be it. Okay. Not to tie into the county and have the residents of the county foot the bill for the water, the sewer, and the upkeep on it. I'm all for if they decide to move forward on this to sell the the land and let them do it. But I would like to know, acreage-wise, as a feed that we're talking about here, because obviously we may not have, you know, great land up there. That may only be a, you know, a 10-acre parcel lot, you know, versus the, the land. Thank you very much. So we were, you made a motion? I'll second. Second? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for all your hard work, and well, we'll see what happens. Do you want to talk child care? <laughs> Are we exhausted? <laughs> this may be shorter. Okay. Or not. Thank you, Josh. Or not. So, Mark and I met with uh, CDFA. Um, this is a similar situation in that there is no commitment. This is a way to move forward with exploring. I, 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 I thought this was included in what we just voted on, but it's not. So this, this is entirely different. This is to con this is um, different. 
this is slightly different. <laughs> the two are, two are co-joined. No. It's, yeah. it's two okay. projects. So the CDFA has planning grants available. We met with the CDFA. Um, they have a $25,000 planning grant, which a needs assessment and feasibility study um, uh, would fund. So the $25,000 planning grant, should the commissioners choose to do that. My feeling is, before we take this conversation seriously, we need to make sure that we, we know what the needs assessment is going to say, frankly, because the need is quite acute. Um, we know that in the state right now, we have more people who are out of the workforce because they can't find childcare than we have unemployed people. It's really at the heart of our workforce shortage. Um, but the feasibility study part of it, I think, is really cr critical um, to determine whether the funds are there to do it. You know, I, I think we are all agreed we don't want to be using taxpayer f funds for this. That we would want to do it completely out of grant funding. I think it's possible, but this would help us establish that, um, identify where those pockets of money are. Again, it's not saying, yes, we are moving forward. It's saying, is this is this worth continued conversation? Um, my understanding from the meeting with the CDFA, and Mark can jump in and add or correct anything, but childcare is one of their priority areas in, the, in their rubric right now. And also as a county, we kind of move their, their rubric again, places us very, very high. So basically the folks we met with at CDFA said, we can't tell you this grant is yours, but you will receive this grant if you apply for it. So, again, this is not saying we want to do child care. This is before we, you know, d determine that, is it even feasible? So this would fund a, you know, we would then go through a process to identify a contractor that we wanted to work with to do that needs assessment and feasibility study. Um, and that report would come back to the commissioners, to the delegation, to discuss whether this makes sense for the county. The we being the county? The, ca the county. And I would say that I think I speak for all of Lands Committee that what we would envision would be a county facility and a provider partner. So we're not running a daycare. We are providing a facility, we're leasing a facility to a provider would be, I think, the, the only scenario that I would imagine. With the building being constructed with non-county funds. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're not building a building. We're going to provide a place for it. I guess my only question would be, somebody made mention or alluded to the fact that the private daycare centers are going out of business. Yep. Why is that? It's a very hard business to make work and I would love to sit down with you and spend hours looking at numbers with you to help you. <laughs> so that's what, what you're really trying to tell me is they can't make money doing it. It's very hard. Um, it's a question of scale. There are several people who are interested and who can make it work. Um, one of the challenges is, or the main challenge is, you don't have price flexibility like you have in your typical mm -hmm. business. Right, because the answer is raise your price to, the, to subsidize the true cost of care. What happens when you do that is it suddenly doesn't pencil with someone's household budget and someone leaves the workforce to stay home with the child, Correct. right? So it is, it's, it's a broken market. There are specific providers who are making it work very well. Um, I do not favor any particular provider, let me make that clear but I'm going to talk about two providers who I've spoken with who are doing a great job because they, there's, a, there's a business model that is working. Not advocating for either of these providers. I'm providing you two intentionally so that you, <laughs> so that you see a couple different ways it is working. There is one provider who I actually didn't get to go down, although I've worked very closely in the legislature. There's one provider um, down in the southern part of the state who is operating a franchise model. She's an incredible businesswoman. She was a New Hampshire Small Businesswoman of the Year a year or two ago. And she has figured out a business model that works. She's a franchiser, right? And she's doing an incredible job. Richard and I met yeah. with her in Georgia. So. Um, 
In Conway, we have Children Unlimited, which is an incredible facility, and they make it work because they have diversified services. So certain services that they provide subsidize the infant and toddler care that is provided at a loss. So they also do, they provide clinical services, so um, speech therapy, um, OT, PT, all those things for, for our children. And actually, their catchment area is like all of Coas, all of Western Maine. They have people come from Concord because they're the only people providing that service, right? And so they bill Medicaid, right? So they have these diversified revenue streams that make that business work for them really well. So what we're finding is that centers, center after center after center is closing with these old models, with these, with these models that are just not, not working. But there are other childcare businesses with models that work that can scale. So I think that is, that is what I would say to you is, there is there's an opportunity if we provide the space with the right provider partner to have a sustainable child care, which would be a really important need. Because we're seeing, we're seeing the need increase. As more so what would close. it cost the county to do that, the land and the building? My hope would be that it would, my proposal, I'm just adding, I'm I would not, say, I'm, I would hope it would be nothing other than potentially the grant, you know, the time to submit grant applications, right? My hope would be that we could do this through, you know, CDBG grants, through congressionally directed spending, through um, northern border grants, you know, um, through private philanthropy. There's actually a lot of private philanthropy money directed in this area right now. Um, so it would basically be, a, a, it would, for all intents and purposes, a private enterprise that would run it, like Correct. similar to the ones that you're Correct. talking about now. Yes, that would be my hope. Um, but why should it be at the county? Because it will help us. It will help us to attract talent. It will help us to retain talent. Um, so that's why I see it being a benefit specifically. No, I, just, I have no argument yeah. with that. I just, I'm yeah. just trying to understand. Yeah. What yeah. I, I know I know the small child care facilities have a real struggle yeah. staying in business. That's why I was curious yeah. how the bigger ones do it. And, and is it because they have enough population, enough children, to make it work? Is, is, that, is that why it doesn't work in smaller places like this? Or? Um, it's a, yeah, it's a numbers game. And it's also the... Um, age of the children, the mix of the ages of the children is incredibly important because there are different teacher to student ratios. So for example, for an infant, you have to have um, one teacher for every, or uh, yeah, one teacher for every four infants in that room. What do you have to charge to pay that person a living wage and benefits, right? So what they do is they have preschool subsidize the younger ages. Um, and so it's very much a numbers game. Um, you know, I think, pe I think people really give child care operators short shrift because they think that they're not running their business as well. They run their businesses very well. It's just a very hard <laughs> business to run. Um, so they have a lot of different, you know, factors that they have to play with. And, um, you know, I think we'll see more creativity, more, bus more business innovation with folks like the franchiser, with folks who are providing other services that help subsidize costs. So um, I think there's a really bright future, but it's going to be, it's going to take creative models. So, so those people that are successful are using their own facilities that they either rent or buy? Yes, typically, yes. And they're still, and they're still able to make it work, the model works? They can, they can make it work, yes. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that there's no no cost if we move forward with this either. You know, maybe we we're, we're charging a decent rent. You know, for whoever's okay. occupying this facility. I get it. Yeah. So, what do you need from us today? What are you looking for? If the commissioners desire an authorization to apply for this grant, because I, as a delegation member, don't have that authority. And what's the grant? It's a twenty-five thousand dollar CDFA grant to fund somebody, a contractor, to be identified um, to conduct the needs assessment and feasibility study. With no, no promise of anything after that? Correct. How does that fit in with a charrette? 
separate. <laughs> well, they, 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 the, Although, the charrette did say that they would, it, when they're developing a community, a walkable community, whatever term, they know that, that daycare is part of that facility and they said that they would talk about where, where would that facility be in relationship to that. And they did also talk about including it in the public input process as well. Yeah, yeah we'd have to have that. Yeah. I'm okay. I mean, okay. And there isn't. There is a need. I mean, we definitely do have a need for child care in some fashion. I'm not a fan of running it ourselves, obviously. No, but I'm not either. But, but uh, it, it doesn't hurt to, to listen. But it doesn't have to listen. It's not something we put it together. Okay. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 I think I think maybe our last item and in, in my <laughs> and, and, and it, Mark. my, my wow. family my family business is sewage and water. We might as well talk about sewage to end here. Oh, this is really they um, so we had we had never gonna let us on another committee. Yeah. <laughs> we we approached um, the Department of Environmental Services Waste Division uh, and Will was here the day we discussed this also. Um, you have you have gone out and you've done a tremendous study on on your water and what you know what the full capabilities your reservoir system and everything else, but your your sewer system is aged 20 plus years, and we had approached them to see if there was similar grant money available to come in and analyze what it is you have here, what the needs are going to be going forward for your county complex, what your, what your capacity is. And the Fire Environmental Services is asking for the same sort of thing, that they would be willing to, if we were to apply for a grant, it would look extremely favorable, that they would send in, um, that they would permit the county to get those funds for uh, analysis of what you had in future planning. And I think without it, doubt that's a benefit for for the county. So we're going to have to apply for the grants. You'd have to give yes. Well you have to give the okay, we you know, but that's yes. Is that grant anywhere connected with the shred and doing the other projects? Uh, affordable housing and the school is that I, part of the process or is it totally separate? It's it's separate. It's, it's what, what's, what's your capacity now, what condition your system is now, uh, do you have, do you, are you operating, you know, at 50% capacity, um, where it really comes into play is, you put this building back in action, can it handle the second commercial kitchen, can it handle everything that's being planned for this building and others, or or are you going to be over capacity? You don't, you don't have you, the county. We have no idea where you are with that right now. And I think it's a tool you're going to need to know so that if lo and behold something major happens and you have to float a big bond, you know, to, to get it back into, into where it needs to be, I think it, it'd be, it would be wonderful for you to do that analysis now while there's federal funds, state and federal funds to help you with that. That was one of our things we were going to ask about. Do we have anything else after this? Um, <laughs> a, a wish, a wish of, um, to just discuss real briefly your plans on this building, because that's our other chair, our other charge. And I could make that simple. Well, this Take, we've got to take a vote on this one first. And this is the sewer? The sewer. I, I'd like to talk about this before we do it. Okay. Not today. Okay. Okay. We're in the same sort of window. I think you have a few weeks to make application. To make the application, okay. Yep. Yep. I think it's end of May. Is that right, that it's due? Oh, yeah. okay. That's, that's, that's going to that's that. gonna be okay. tight. For we can put that one. Yes. Okay. We do, we, well, just to let you know, we have not heard anything back. I think I talked to Ava on Monday, yeah, yesterday, and um, she's going to push it to try to have them here next Thursday, if any way possible. We, so. we had discussed as the Lands Advisory Slash Annex Committee 
uh, we have more hats than one. And um, we had heard that it was the commissioner's decision that if you proceed with the project, you were going to start at the back of the building and work your way to the front. Mm, that's not, that, uh, not that exactly. was not. Okay, well, we're glad to hear that because it was... It that was, was a conversation, but that was not okay. a decision. And we're, we're hoping, I don't like, we've got the, the last uh, amount that we have. We are, we are only short to be able to do everything that we want for a million instead of the three because uh, with Bonnie's magic and stuff, we have we're short that and then we we're applying for a, a grant that I think we're going to be eligible for 500000 another grant so that will only leave us short so the, the, the amount of work that has been done by your collective body in this room yep. that's absolutely wonderful in the county so it yeah. is it is the wish we we in the lands advisory committee see a real need for this front space that has been talked yep. about we see a, a real need to preserve the community yep. uh, the, the kitchen as a possibility for an extension of farming and so forth and it is our hope that if monies are spent in here, we start at the front with windows, flooring, and everything else, and progress to the back. Mr. Chairman has, the delegation, has brought the question back up. At what point do you stop on this building, and is there a real need to go all the way back in this building, or should, should the project end somewhere in this building, and funds, if those funds can be moved in a different direction, would it make sense to add on to another building, i.e. the nursing home, which was constructed for that purpose, to bring in a limited number of assisted living and office space over there than spending money on an old building that at least one, one year or two years I sat here should have been condemned and torn down. I offer that for your continued conversation. Yes. You know, and I have been discussing this. We are at opposite views, but yeah. I'm never would always listen, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I did tell the chairman of our delegation, and we started this discussion that I would bring it forward to. What else do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> is it going to snow? Yeah, my wife says it is. I'm hoping it's not. So. Okay, well, that's it. So we just have to talk about this. Well, that's thing. a good one. Really, who would we'll take care of that? Who plows the property for one of these things? You know, the There's a little things you don't think about. It'll be we'll Hopefully, we'll have that. Sure. I mean, I mean, my question is, if we didn't have the kitchen, who's going to use it? I mean, that becomes the issue for, for me. But I think this part, I mean, personally, I think this part should be done first. Make the most of it. I'm hoping we're going to be able to do it all. So, we'll see. We'll see. Mark, you have some from money laying around. <laughs> yeah. I, I have uh, three. <laughs> I have uh, three new grandchildren this year. So. Oh, <laughs> help me, I know. They all need shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're going to need college education eventually. Yeah. They're bigger problems. Thank you for your time. Thank you, gentlemen, Thank you, very Richard. much. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 I guess I can do that. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 214. See, I thought we'd be out of here early. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs>